landmines are deadly and indiscriminate weapons. They maim or kill over 10,000 innocent people around the world each year and terrorize millions more with their presence. They are as durable as they are dangerous and remain hidden and lethal long after wars have ended. They cost only a few dollars to produce but require hours of labor and thousands of dollars to remove. There are probably 50 million landmines uh, around the world in some, as I recall, 70 countries around the world. These mines are small. They're usually buried. They're hard to find. Sometimes they're made of plastic. And these mines don't know if it's a heavy combat foot of a soldier or if it's a bare foot of a child. Getting mines out of the ground is a difficult problem to solve because you have to find them. And frankly, mines today can be as large as a tuna fish can, but they're made out of plastic. And there's nothing metal in them, so you can't detect them with an anti-magnetic device. It is not easy work. You and I could put 10 landmines in a field in 10 minutes. It might take a day or more to get those landmines out of there. But somebody has to do it. The ramifications are incredible because it's not just the injuries you sustain from landmines. It's the fact that you can't get to medical care, you can't farm your land, you can't feed your families. It just goes on and on and on. And just the terror that you can't walk somewhere. As the toll of landmines surged in the final decades of the 20th century, so too did the international movement to assist mine-affected countries and their victims. Landmines are now being detected and removed at a pace that may bring an end to the crisis, not in a hundred years or fifty as once thought, but in as little as twenty years. Landmines have killed and maimed more people than nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons combined and they're known as weapons of mass destruction and slow motion. These indiscriminate killers constitute one of the greatest public health hazards of the late 20th century, and they're a man-made epidemic. Humanitarian organizations and governments around the world are working together to address this serious issue, developing new technologies and operational procedures to mitigate the global landmine problem. Since its founding, the Marshall Legacy Institute has been in the vanguard of nonprofit organizations helping to end the scourge of landmines by applying practical solutions in countries that need the most help. The Marshall Legacy Institute began in 1997, which was the 50th anniversary year of the Marshall Plan. Our charter says that we are to help alleviate human suffering, to help extend the vision and legacy of George Marshall, to help peoples of the developing world help themselves. I found, founded the organization because I felt that it was appropriate to recognize Secretary of State Marshall's uh, legacy in creating collaborative efforts with nations. This is a collaborative effort between people of the United States and the country involved, but we don't go in and take the mines out of the ground, they do. The mission of MLI is to get as many mines as we can out of the land in as many countries as we can to save as many lives as we can. But it's not just saving lives. If there's a village in which people even believe there are landmines, uh, maybe there was one that went off a few years ago, then they're not going to dare go out and till the fields and people will not get food. The children aren't going to dare go to schools. If there's some sort of epidemic, it's going to be much harder for people to get to clinics. So landmines have a huge economic, social impact, uh, and uh, we think getting the mines out of the fields, obviously, then, is a very important part of economic development. The Marshall Legacy Institute has provided essential resources and training to a host of war-torn countries, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Eritrea, Lebanon, Nicaragua, Sri Lanka, and Thailand. Well, it turns out dogs are much the most efficient way to get the mines out of the fields. The traditional way of finding landmines is with metal detectors. And in most of the anti-personnel landmines, there's only one tiny little spring 
made of metal. The rest is plastic, so it's very hard to find. The dogs sniff the explosive gases coming off the mines so that they are much better at finding these things, and therefore a village can begin to live again. In Sri Lanka, which has been torn by over 20 years of civil war, the Marshall Legacy Institute established a dog detection program in 2004. The dogs are working with highly trained handlers in the Jaffna Peninsula and other landmine afflicted regions to return land to productive use and refugees to their homes. In Azerbaijan, MLI has donated 18 mine detection dogs to the National Mine Action Authority assisting in clearing landmines and other explosive remnants from past conflicts. Private donors sponsored the dogs and the U.S. Department of State provided funding to train and equip local handlers. MLI replaced 18 retiring mine detection dogs in Bosnia. The dogs work with local non-profit demining organizations representing the different ethnic groups in Bosnia. Thus far we've provided 92 dogs uh, to eight countries that are coming through the throes of uh, conflict. One of the key missions of our office in the State Department is to work with organizations like the Marshall Legacy Institute to reach out to the American people. The Marshall Legacy Institute does excellent work to raise awareness and resources for mine action, but it also touches uh, the hearts and minds of uh, American citizens around this great country. To foster a spirit of global citizenship and to engage American youth in an important international humanitarian issue, the Marshall Legacy Institute is reaching out to America's school children as well as adults through its Children Against Mines program, or CHAMPS for short. Have you ever seen a landmine? No. A real landmine? No. We're pretty lucky that you don't see real ones, aren't we? Yes. CHAMPS encourages students to take action to get involved, to help others in faraway places. We created CHAMPS and Wyoming kids were the very first in the nation to give a quarter and buy their own landmine detection dog. And her name is Wyoming and she's in Sri Lanka and every day she saves the lives of other children. And they know that and they know they made a difference and I think if you teach a child in third grade that they can make a difference, they'll make a difference the rest of their lives. And children love this because they love dogs and they find out that other children are in danger, they didn't know that, and they find out they can make a difference and they can do it for as little as a quarter at a time. So it's a wonderful project for kids, it really is. What I especially like about this program is that it tries to go um, right down to kids so that kids in the United States are helping kids overseas and I think if you can get kids engaged you might be bringing in their parents and you're also creating a lasting movement for the future. With the support of caring global citizens like you, the Marshall Legacy Institute in the years ahead will continue its humanitarian work, increasing the quality and quantity of its mine detection dog teams worldwide, engaging more communities and students, assisting landmine survivors, and providing essential resources to needy countries to help make a better and safer world. I've been a soldier my whole life. I understand the dangers of these weapons and I am very interested in actually doing something. We know there's lots of people talking about it, we're doing it, and that's what we're designed to do. Help other people help themselves and get the mines out of the ground. The uh, mine action story is actually a good news story. The U.S. government has contributed over one billion dollars to mine action since 1993, but the private sector is making significant contributions as well. And the good news is that more landmines are coming out of the ground than are going in the ground. And this is a problem that we will solve in decades, not centuries. For the first time, just in the last few years, more mines are being pulled out of the fields than are being put into them. And the number of casualties is going down from landmines. This shows that it works. This is a success. We've got a formula on landmines that really is working now. Let's use that to stimulate even further efforts in this rather than move on to the next issue. We just have to uh, be really dedicated and, and, and not give up because landmines don't stop hurting until they're all gone. I think the strongest testimony to the success of our program and in every country, bar none, in which we have given them their first six-pack of life-saving dogs and train their first group of six handers to use those dogs, the countries have gone on to expand the programs on their own. Seeing that response, seeing the way in which these teams are making a difference in the world, 
to make a safer place for children to play, for people to work, and for animals to live and communities to grow. That is what has inspired us and keeps us going.